Hello and welcome to the assembly. I'm Harshit and today I'm going to show you how to make a real-time uh, database in Firebase and connect it using a Python program and to do various operations on it such as adding data, viewing it and deleting it. So let's get started. So to begin what we would require is to create a database, real-time database on Firebase uh, but first we'll also need to create a project over there. So let's get started. Once you uh, go to the Firebase website, uh, we'll go to the console and from there we'll create a pro new project. So as you can see, I already have my existing projects here as well, but uh, swallow along and uh, we'll create a new project. Let's just call it my project for now. And really doesn't matter. So let's give it any name, my project, and then continue with the default options over here. Next, we'll again use the default account for Firebase and <coughs> it'll take a while for the project to be created. Now that the project has, uh, project is ready, we can just continue. Um, and it'll take us to the project console and over here uh, the first thing we need to do is build a, a real-time database so we, uh, go on that option and over here as you can see there are many options there uh, it, you can see how to use it and stuff but all we need to do is create a database right now and we need to choose a location so depending on where you are based you choose the closest location to you since i'm in asia i'll choose singapore and uh, it doesn't really matter the location, but it's, it's just quicker that way. So uh, as you can see, there are two options right now. We can either start in test mode or log mode. So in log mode, the uh, data is private by default. But for now, we'll start uh, start a database in log mode and then change the rules a bit. So I'll just enable that. And it's loading. So once, once it's loaded, uh, what the first thing we'll do is uh, hop on to the rules tab and over here we need to edit the rules so as you can see you can change anything over here so all we need to do is change the false to true and we'll just do that over here and over here as well and then hit on publish changes so once it's done a warning will pop up uh, that since we are we are uh, our rules are public anyone can modify or delete that data but since it's just a testing thing we don't really care and we can hop back into data and as you can see this is the url for our database right now so that's that next thing we need to do is go to the settings project settings and over here scroll down till we see your apps now we need to uh, select a platform to get started and we'll go with this and we can give any name again to the app let's call it my project one and then we register the app. Once, once um, it's loaded, we can see that we get this part, which is basically the SDK. So we'll just copy this part and keep it with us. And uh, then what we need to do is hop over into the Python uh, and create a program there. Uh, so in this case, I've opened a Google Colab notebook, but any Python envi environment would work in this case. So uh, to get started, uh, the first step is to ins install these modules, uh, the Firebase and Firebase. We are mainly working with Firebase, but uh, what uh, what Firebase does is install some uh, dependencies which Firebase has, otherwise you'll have to do it individually. So it just makes it easier. If you don't want to, you can just uh, download them as like the warning swap. So uh, I'll, I'll install these and then we'll move on. Once we're done installing the modules, next I'm going to import uh, Firebase. So to do that from Firebase, I'm importing import Firebase with capital F. So once we execute that, uh, the next step is to basically uh, paste this part of the code from our project. And uh, it's, there's a small change since we don't have cons in Python, we're going to remove that. And we can just use this as a normal variable over here. So we can just name it anything like config. And what we need to do next is to convert the these parts into strings. So we we'll just do that and go one by one. So basically, it's all the information about project. So here we have our database URL, uh, and domain key, etc. So now we can make a connection to a database and it's simply all it requires is basically calling a variable and 
calling this five based method and the argument we are providing is config basically so we are providing this as, as an argument now if you run this and it works without error or we, we have established a connection to a database and there we go it ran without error so we are successfully connected to our database and it's that simple next i'll show you how to uh, add data view data and uh, manipulate data basically uh, in uh, real in real time database now that we have successfully created the con uh, connection to our project we can hop over into the real time database over here and check if the uh, check the status of the database basically as you can see it's completely empty and if we do want to enter any data we can enter it through here uh, using this uh, gui interface but uh, basically how this database works is it takes every value in a key and uh, key and like key and uh, value uh, pair so it's uh, much like a dictionary in python so over here if i enter a key called name and then i can add a value so j and uh, if you add it here you'll see that's how it works and now we'll try doing the same adding data used from my python program and so i'll just delete this and we'll continue in python so right now my if i refresh my database it's completely empty and there's nothing in it also one small thing it's a no sql database and uh, so it doesn't require any commit you can directly uh, ref the changes are directly reflected uh, in the database basically so switching back to python what we need to do next is create a connection to the database itself so we can just call it db and then firebase dot database data base and over here uh, to add any data as we uh, discussed earlier we need to create a dictionary and add dictionary itself so uh, we'll do just that call dictionary and have a name over here as key and then the value can be any random name like john so uh, now that we have created data all we need to do is add now to add data there are two ways uh, so you can either push the data or set the data now uh, i'll just go along and do it and you can see the difference uh, in how they work so if i simply set the data what it will do is db.set and i can uh, provide dictionary as argument and let's not give it a keyword let's call it date date okay and call it data here as well now if I do set this date, we can immediately switch over to our database and see that the name has popped up since it's in real time. We can try more data as well into a real time database and it should reflect immediately. Uh, so if you can see, I'll mix, uh, add some more uh, values to our dictionary. So let's give it a number. And we can have one, two, and any yeah, random number, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, We'll make changes to the uh, dictionary, and from there, if I let's try pushing this time. So, if I push instead of set, um, there'll be a small slight difference. It'll work the same, but if you open to our database, you'll see that instead of just putting the data or uh, dictionary into our root directory, it creates a unique token ID or like a unique node. And if you open that, you can see that uh, our dictionary or data is inside there. So, that's the main difference between push and uh, set. Set just puts it in the main uh, root directory, while uh, push will create uh, like a separate node or unique to with a unique token ID and put it in that. We can also create our own nodes and have like a tree tree like structure. So to do, uh, push the data in that way, what we can do is call the child function. So uh, db dot child, and in that we we'll just call name or let's say details and in details we can have the dictionary itself so dot set and now we can put the data over here now if you do run this and hop on the database you can see that we have a node called details and if you open it everything pops up and we can stack these nodes uh, one, uh, one inside of the other so we could have another child over here and go on that in the same way now one thing to keep in mind is uh, when we use set or push, it will replace all the pre-existing data. So if I call set again on a new set of data, it will replace the old existing one. So instead of just using set, what we can do is use update. And this will uh, just maintain the previous data and add the new one as well. So if we just use that instead, it will work the same, but it won't get rid of the previous data. So 
that's about it for adding data now if you want to uh, view our uh, database over here what we can do is uh, use the get function so basically we'll just call db1 equal to db.get so we get all the information from the database and then we just need to iterate over it so for uh, to iterate we just create a loop for i in db1 dot each so each data we're printing that so for each value we need to get the for each data basically we need to get the print the value so over here we'll print i dot val since it's a dictionary so if we run this we'll see that it's exactly like in the same structure as a database so uh, name john again john and then john so if i remove say suppose this one and uh, run back over here we'll have one less and there you go now we can also remove uh, the data from here so suppose i want to remove this node called details what i'll simply do is uh, go here and say db.child get the name of the child uh, which is details in this case and call the remove function on it so once we call this it should have removed it and there you go it's gone and that's about it that's the basics of how you manipulate data uh, on a real-time firebase uh, database basically if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and comment. And do follow us on other social media to keep up with our content.